Prime Minister reassures business community of continued progress. No added tax is expected in supplementary budget. And Hela security call-out expanded to stop Enga and Southern Highlands violence. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Thursday's news. A grade 12 student of Koppen Secondary in Wabeg was shot dead after the looting of a shop in Wabeg town on Monday. Families of the deceased, late Yambi Isaiah, are blaming police and the defense force for his death. Enga Provincial Police Commander George Kaka said police will respond after receiving the results from a scheduled post-mortem of the deceased. The body of late Yambi is at the Wabek Hospital morgue awaiting a post-mortem. Yambi and his big sister were at Copen Secondary before the shooting where Yambi received his transfer letter to find a different school due to the fight in Wabek. On Monday at around 12 p.m., police reports stated that there was a looting by opportunists at a shop in Wabek Town. Police could not identify who fired the shots because at that same time, all the security forces were at Amala and Teramanda maintaining peace when the incident happened. The reason why they've been doing that was that uh, because uh, we've been keeping all the uh, shops, I mean the shops have been shut because of the, the unrest. Uh, so maybe the people have been uh, uh, fed up running out of food and uh, they've been forming, congregating in small groups and rushing to stores and raiding those uh, stores. There have been a couple of incidents where uh, one or two shops have been uh, raided. On Tuesday, tribesmen of the deceased from Surungi in the Laiaga Pogara electorate went to Wabek police station and demanded answers from the police why their son was shot dead. However, PPC Kakas told the Surungi people that the security forces were not in Wabek when the incident happened. He urged them to remain calm until they received the post-mortem result and identify which bullet was used, whether from the security forces or civilians. Hopefully we would uh, uh, resolve the issue, uh, get some investigation uh, undergoing to find out the cause, the actual cause, the circumstances uh, surrounding uh, the shooting of the, the youth. Vasinata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. The security call-out in Hela province is to be expanded to prevent unrest in Enga and Southern Highlands. In a media release this afternoon, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill made the announcement saying the call-out was allowed under the existing order for Hela province. He said there was no more room for patients with troublemakers in the two provinces and this call-out will enable defence and police personnel to work together to maintain order. He said there will be zero tolerance on any further interruptions to law and order and community safety and issued a clear warning to people seeking to cause disruption, saying it was unacceptable and impacting on the lives of men, women and children. The Prime Minister Peter O'Neill met with the business community at the Business Council breakfast meeting this morning in Port Mosby. Mr O'Neill reassured the business community that the government is committed in providing business-friendly environment. The Prime Minister spoke on encouraging investment and employment for Papua New Guineans. The Prime Minister Peter O'Neill speaking at the Business Council meeting that rumours of a tax increase was not true. We are not contemplating any new taxes as part of 2017 supplementary budget. While we know that there are critics and our, our friends out there who continue to suggest that there will be some from new taxes, I think they should be guided by history. 
what we have been able to do so in the last six years. In those six years, we certainly did not increase any new taxes while we were in government. The Prime Minister went on to add that in the 2018 budget, there will be a tax review. We have a renewed focus on the implementation of a fair revenue system, which is more efficient, more responsive to the needs of our country. Meaning that uh, we are not necessarily trying to increase taxes, but we are trying to make it fair, trying to capture those who are not paying their fair way in our country. Mr. O'Neill says the government will make sure every citizen and businesses have a tax ID number to ensure that everyone is paying their tax. That will be with some stringent introduction of new measures, including ensuring that uh, every company and every person has got a tax file number before they either register with the Investment Promotion Authority to conduct business in the country. And of course, in order for anyone to open up uh, bank accounts in the country, we'll be all required to ensure that they have a tax file number. Uh, that way we capture everyone who is out there who is not paying their share of taxes in the country. Yesterday, Finance Minister James Marpes said the Ministry, along with Treasury, in the first 100 days, will look into efforts to decrease PNG high tax rates. But taxing uh, popping in out there again to, uh, to, to increase uh, whether it's personal income tax or GST for that matter. But we're looking at the compliance aspect, especially of uh, uh, corporate uh, entities out there with the SME to large-scale corporate uh, entities. Uh, I think our government is seriously looking at compliance so that everyone pay your fair share of tax. Whether Adelaide Xerox Kari National, MTV News. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says there will be no added tax in the 2017 supplementary budget. Speaking at the PNG Business Council breakfast meeting, he added that rumours of a tax increase were not true. But the Prime Minister said they will be looking into a tax review in the 2018 budget. Telecom PNG has been a part of the important 10th Parliament induction program for new and re-elected members of Parliament. The week-long induction program includes a series of presentations from parliamentary services, public sector, private and business sector and developing agencies. State-owned entity Telecom PNG was part of the exhibit to encourage MPs to harness the advantages of its communication services. There were exhibition stalls set up on the parliament grounds as well for MPs to have one-on-one -on -one interactions with the various organizations, ranging from the extractive industry, technology companies and other nationally owned companies. I would say it's a great opportunity for Telecom to be here at the parliament house. The reason being that uh, we are a nationally owned company, Telecom PNG, and we want to um, get the business out to all the 111 members. National retail manager Amos Tepe said Telecom's purpose at the exhibit was to encourage MPs to utilize Telecom's ICT services for the development and enhancement of their electorates. Types of services that Telecom provide to all the provinces in a country is uh, one, uh, VSET services provide the link for uh, voice, internet, data, TV signal, most of the centers, that main centers, you definitely see those products and services out there. At the remotest areas, that's where we're coming in now to ask 111 members to start thinking about how they will get these services to their electorates. On Tuesday, Acting Chief Executive Officer Xavier Victor gave a presentation by Kumul Telecom Holdings Limited to the members of Parliament. Mr. Victor highlighted Telecom's product and service range around the country beginning with its quality 3G, 4G, LTE, GSM mobile products, affordable voice and data rates, fast LTE mobile internet speeds in the country, backed with its 24-7 customer service by its national call center. The presentation also covered the products and service range of its subsidiary companies, including Daytech, MTV, FM100, PNG Directories, PNG Dataco, and B-Mobile Vodafone. 
Mr. Victor said Telecom PNG stands ready to partner with electorates and provinces to deliver affordable tailor-made ICT solutions to meet their specific needs. He said Telecom can deliver a one-stop shop solution or bundle package for the schools, health centers, and government stations in the electorates comprising of fixed, wireless, and mobile service, media and content, and ICT and learning development programs. Deli Waigeno, National, MTV News. Incoming Transport Minister Wesley Nukunz announced big projects for the department in the duration of his term, including a proposal to fix the Highlands Highway, ill reputed for its eroding roads. Nukunz made these statements after former Minister for Transport Malakai Tabar officially handed over departmental duties today. In a media conference attended by transport sector CEOs and mediated by the department secretary Roy Mumu, Tabar congratulated Nukunj while acknowledging the challenges that come with this obligation. This is a department that is uh, very important but also difficult, uh, and especially as you think of the uh, policy guidelines of um, looking after transportation in a country like Papua New Guinea. Uh, we have a lot of challenges. This is the second time Tabar will hand over transport department duties to Nukunj since 2013. Nukunj responded with plans for the department, which he reiterated would follow guidelines established in Alatau Accord 2. Uh, which is to be guided by our main uh, strategy document, that is the National Transport uh, Strategy Document. Uh, uh, in in, in line with the Alatau 2 Accord. Plans to install way bridges along the Highlands Highway to control maximum load capacity for vehicles. Uh, many people are complaining that uh, roads are, uh, you know, there's a lot of potholes, but what are the real cause? Uh, climate change may be one, uh, you know, weather may be another, but why are we continuously facing the, you know, potholes? One contributing factor could be that the trucks are overloaded. Crack down on the regulations that control the manner of imported used vehicles into the country. Well, when you look at it, some cars are manufactured in 2000, maybe 1998. And, you know, a family saving, the, you know, they want a new car, they import it and in just one year, and the car is off the road again. So family savings is gone. So there's got to be some restriction. Mm. And establish proper coordination between the three transport sectors, land, air and sea, to ensure that projects are well underway before his term ends. Nokunj also announced that the department will be hosting the 9th APAC Transport Ministerial Meeting from the 6th to the 8th of October this year. Melissa Gaviro, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. The new Minister for Intergovernment Relations, Kevin Isifu, wants to see cooperative work ethics at the Department of Provincial and Local Level Government Affairs. The Minister was welcomed to the Department today by the staff as part of his orientation to the Department. Key issues discussed were border security, fire services and national disaster. The morning meeting was held at Kitpeng House, which houses the Department of Provincial Local Government Agencies and Disaster Offices. Mr. Isifu told Department and agency staff that good decisions must be made to deliver services. I believe I can see that you are all very experienced people sitting in here. You are professionals in your own fields, in your own departments. Uh, and I cannot... Uh, I cannot see any reason why we should not work. You have all the experience there and with a very good secretary. I think, I believe this team will move forward. Agency heads of fire services, border security and national disaster were urged to work closely with each other and the Department of Provincial and Local Government Affairs. They also used the opportunity to outline their plans for the next five years and highlighted areas where they needed support. But actually, the organization was 
uh, in terms of recruitment of staff and all that in uh, 2009. The act was uh, enacted was for PDA to coordinate and implement the uh, infrastructure pro projects. In the that is how your determina the political determination looks like. You are responsible for these four agencies. The BLGA, National Disaster, Pensy Fire Services, Border Development Authority, and those are the heads. Plans are in place for each agency to have separate meetings with the minister to outline their plans and challenges that need attention over the next five years. Godwin Eki, National MTV News. More evictions are happening in and around NCD despite the directive from Housing Minister John Cowper to stop evictions on NHC properties. Family members of war veteran late Oisa Evoa were kicked out of their home despite the intervention of former NHC boss John Dege and then Housing Minister Paul Ezekiel. The Evoa family told MTV News the evictions have added pressure on the family which has seen four deaths so far. This will be the fifth eviction for the Ewa family in Port Moresby's Hall or Suburb. The previous eviction grabbed the attention of NHC former boss John Denge and then Housing Minister Paul Ezekiel. However, family members told MTV News recommendations and steps agreed to in a roundtable meeting last year have been overlooked. The uh, NHC is, uh, is involved, that's uh, compromised and uh, they have... Uh, They've in involved themselves to, uh, to this uh, fraudster who has evicted us from our home. The Eowa family who hails from Gulf have lived on the property since the 1960s. The continuous battle to retain title to the property has severely affected them. Their mother, father and two elder daughters have passed on in the past 48 months. Uh, the recent death was my big sister who passed away on the first of this month and it was a very difficult situation for us when we had uh, no house cry and we lost our elderly other sister as well our father and our mother and so far there are four deaths in the family now just because of this eviction here and i believe it's a fraudulent uh, fraudulent case the eldest of the Hewa family is now being sheltered at the Hola Christian Outreach Center. He says life has not been easy for the entire family. We want to go back to our rightful house where we, will, we were born in. Despite losing family members, the Hewas have remained with a good heart to have the name on the land title. I'm calling on the minister to uh, uh, see the situation and then get up authorities to investigate into this matter uh, with the national housing and the lands. Uh, and we went, all I want now is I want my family back in my home here and I want my house back and my title back. So far, five evictions have happened in the NCD despite the directive from Housing Minister John Cowper to stop all evictions on NHE properties. Reports of recent evictions have reached Minister Cowper but is yet to make a statement. Jack LaPava, Jr., National MTV News. A British national hired by a lay-based company has taken to Facebook to highlight alleged labor and work permit abuses by his employer. Richard Martin was recruited from the UK by Bola Motors last year. He says for five months he wasn't paid the agreed salary and was given 100 kina per week as financial support. Martin was then told that his work permit had expired and he had to leave the country. He has since returned to pursue a case against the company. In a turn of events today, Richard Martin was slapped with a court order barring him from any Facebook activity related to the company. He has also returned fire by personally serving a summons on the company. And it was from Richard Martin is from Runcorn in England and he was recruited by Bolo Motors in 2016 as an operations manager. He says according to his contract he was supposed to be paid up to 5,000 kina per month. But when Richard arrived in Leigh, that didn't happen. Week, I was given 100 kina a week to live on. Now, for an expat, that's unacceptable. For me, I managed to be prudent with the money and stretch it. 
so it would last me a whole week. For five months in 2016, he didn't receive a salary. According to his calculations, Bola Motors owes him more than 100,000 kina. Uh, my salary was always given to me in a cheque. It was never done through the bank like it should be. I never paid any tax. In 2016, Richard was told to leave the country because his work permit had apparently expired. According to Richard, it was with the understanding that he would resume work once the documents had been processed. Whilst in England, he received no updates and had to find another job, save money and return to Papua New Guinea. The, the two letters that I received uh, on the 27th of January 2017, uh, which led to me being repatriated back to the United Kingdom, I never got a copy of that. I was never allowed to have one. His efforts to get answers from Bola Motors weren't successful. In the last two weeks, he started a social media campaign posting videos, photographs and documents highlighting various claims of breaches of work permit laws and abuse. Richard Martin was initially recruited by this woman, Monica Chen, who was a former work colleague of Richard's in England. Yesterday, we sought a response from her. She refused to go on record and referred us to her lawyers. Monica Chin said, however, Richard Martin was terminated and his full entitlements paid, a claim Richard Martin denies. Yesterday, when we contacted Simon Ketan of Ketan Lawyers, the law firm that represents Bola Motors, he reaffirmed Monica Chen's statements. He also said Bola Motors would be going to court to pursue defamation charges against Richard Martin. This morning, a court order was given to Richard Martin, restraining him from publishing any material on Facebook related to Bola Motors. The lawyers of Bola Motors have also summoned him to appear in court. Contained in the court documents is a letter of termination saying Richard Martin was terminated on the 3rd of February 2017. There's also another date of termination contained in the affidavit, the 7th of February. Richard Martin maintains he was never given a letter of termination. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lay. More TV teachers have to be trained as more TVET instructors have to be trained as teachers to effectively deliver in the classrooms. Equipped with the knowledge of their trade, it has to be complemented with teaching skills. This was highlighted by the Department of Education's Assistant Secretary for TVET School Operations, Asanet Tugiao, at the TVET Principals and Governing Council's Chairperson's Consultative Forum in Lai. Could not be able to see Technical and vocational training representatives and education officials met in Lay this week for an annual forum to discuss issues and the progress of TVET schools in the country. One of the challenges highlighted is the need for more TVET instructors to be trained as teachers. We still have untrained teachers, although they are tradesmen, but we still they still need to be trained. Training will qualify them to teach in the classrooms. We have to update our, our teachers on a new or on the latest uh, technology. The Deputy Secretary of Education, Winnie Lekka, said TV teaching requires more work. We recruit teachers with industrial experience. They must have teaching qualifications before they walk into the classroom to teach. So that's one big area that we have to improve in. A large number of students pass out to TVET institutions in the country every year. The demand for skills in the workplace immense. Funding, however, has been a constraint in meeting this demand. Lekka said TVET colleges need more recognition. Is TVET must be understood and recognized as a universal right to education and training. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lay. And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.3145 US dollars in the interbank markets. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0 0.307 US dollars, 0 0.3833 Australian dollars, 0.2571 Euro and 33.45 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold and copper closed higher, coffee and cocoa closed the day lower. Palm oil and crude oil closed higher, while copper closed the day lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 25.88 points higher.
The ASX closed at 6 points lower and the All Ordinaries closed at 3.62 points lower. Hundreds of bodies recovered from the mudslides in Sierra Leone, fighting ISIS and a memorial service for a young woman killed in the racial violence in the U.S. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas, a week of national mourning has begun in Sierra Leone following a deadly landslide that killed at least 400 people with more than 100 children among the dead. At least 600 people are still missing with rescue workers looking for any survivors. On the day after, emergency services are still overstretched. Inside the central mortuary at the main Connaught Hospital, there are piles of bodies. They are lying on the floor in the open because there is no more space. Nearly 100 bodies were brought in on Tuesday morning, bringing the total number to nearly 400, some of them limbless. The head of the, of the mortuary says they are completely overstretched, and that is not all, as they were cleaning up the place, trying to sort the corpses out. More corpses are being brought in from different parts of the city. Even the rescue effort here is challenged. People are believed to still be alive underneath this spot. Even if they are, it will be a miracle to find them breathing. The government and development partners have now set up a response center, registering those left behind by the disaster. Relief supplies are, however, slow in coming. But the testimonies from people who have been badly hit by this disaster are in no short supply. I first saw the body of my sister and called on people to help me, and we laid her on the floor. Then I started hearing other people nearby crying. I've lost all of my family. Monday's mudslide and flash floods have shaken this country. Even for a country that has known a bloody civil war and a destabilizing Ebola outbreak, this is unbearable. In the United States, a memorial service has been held for the woman killed in the violence when a car was deliberately driven in demonstrators protesting against the white nationalist. Heather Heyer was remembered as a strong woman, her mother calling on people to unite in her death. It was a powerful and heartfelt ceremony for Justine Damon here at the Lake Harriet Banshell in Minneapolis. The home that Justine shared with her American fiancé Don is just about a mile from here and her friends have told me that she loved coming here for walks and that this was a special place to her. Her fiancé Don did speak and address the crowd and it was a very moving tribute to his fiancé. He said that they should have been on a plane together to Hawaii for their wedding, but they were here and he was going to use the occasion to profess his love for Justine. I really experienced love. I'm, I've never been married. I'm 50 years old this past year. Um, but I love at such a level, such a deep level. And it felt like a privilege to love Justine. Justine Damon's father, John, also spoke, and you could feel the raw grief and anguish that's tearing at this family. Not only are they mourning their daughter, but they still don't have any answers from police about what happened. Her father said that she was killed by an agent of the state and that this should never have happened and spoke about the grief that's tearing him apart. I should have been on a plane to her wedding, but we were flying to her funeral. This is our first visit to Minneapolis. We should be walking arm in arm down the street, smiling and laughing. And now each step on the footpath is so very painful. Chukai Sports is next to details after the break. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. A win for the SP PNG Hunters this weekend will see them claim this year's minor premiership. The Hunters play their final home match for the season on Sunday at the National Football Stadium.
Heading into the season, the team's main goal was to make it into the top six to qualify for the finals. The Hunters team has done well, topping the interest Super Cup ladder for almost 10 weeks. Yeah, no, my premiership is, uh, uh, wasn't part of our goal this year. We wanted to qualify for top six, uh, but you know, we've done really well. Uh, making it, uh, you know, with three points are clear, we got the other teams coming, uh, having a buy and they'll, they'll get easy two points there. So. The Hunters are one game away from securing the minor premiership. Uh, win for us, we see us minor premiers, you know, big for the, uh, the, uh, the team, only uh, new team to the competition, our fourth season. Uh, in our second, third year, fourth year, we've now made the final. So. Also, a win this weekend will see them have a home semi-final. Pushing out for a win, uh, we have a home semi-final, we finish number one, uh, one game away from uh, the big one, but you know, we are only focusing on one game, one one day at a time, so we want to we make sure our players are focused on, on just their training preparations for these weekend's games. The Hunters' defensive effort was what gave them the win last weekend. They hope to do the same this weekend. You know, big game for us, last home game. Uh, you know, a lot of fans will come and support us back here at home. Uh, and know uh, we come back here for uh, another game during the finals, but you know, our focus is on winning. We haven't played them this year. We can't uh, write them off there on number nine sports. So yeah, big game for us. We need to win it there. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. To Netball and City Pharmacy Rebels, Paramana and Snacks Mermaids notched up comfortable wins in last night's Port Moresby Premier Division. The Rebels, without skipper Lua Rikis, dominated their Veopunama opponents in a 25 point win. It had been seven long weeks since the last round of matches and there was an air of sluggishness as players shook off the cobwebs of almost two months of no competition. Paramana had a tight match against Telstars, a 10-point buffer by the end of the third quarter, a struggle to maintain as the game ended 56-47. to That match played simultaneously with CPL Rebels taking on Veuponama. Veoponama have struggled throughout the season to keep a top two placing in tier two with looming finals and they were again exposed defensively and in mid-court. Rebels goal shooter Daisy Ole pairing well with GA Carol Pirica to good effect despite missing regular attacker and captain Lua Rikis. By far the most comfortable victory of last night's matches, Rebels winning big with a 56-31 final score. Mona again suffered another defeat, this time at the hands of Arnofonza Raukele, losing by two points as Raukele look at their own final chances. The result, a narrow 37-35 point win in Raukele's favour. The clash of the night, however, had rivals Snacks Mermaid's mid-credit core Sparrows. In June, the Sparrows had seemed the side most likely to unseat the Mermaids and despite glimpses of brilliance, they struggled to impose themselves in the match. Watched by her father, Deputy Prime Minister Charles Abel, goal defender Courtney Abel had another good performance for the Sparrows, albeit in a losing side. It was a good start, you know, after a really long uh, break. Um, so I think uh, to start off with the top team, uh, Mermaids, um, who played really extremely well. I think for us, our shooters let us down just a little bit, um, but you know, um, that happens and we're happy with um, what um, what transpired over the, over the course of the game? It was a really hard game to start off with um, after a very long layoff, um, but good game to get those cobwebs out and get us uh, the momentum going again. Yeah. The competition resumes next Wednesday. Jeremy Moggy, National TV Sports. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Don't go away. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Chukai Sports. To boxing, PNG Professional Boxing is gearing up for a tournament scheduled for September 10th. Elias Basa, who will feature in the main event with Nelson Sampson, was privileged to secure a 2,000 Kina sponsorship, courtesy of New Guinea Islands insurance brokers and risk consultants. With an expected 10 fighters to converge into sports scene in the nation's capital this September, the event is deemed to take precedence over any other combat sport held in the country in the last six months. PNG Professional Boxing Association President Elwin Wafawa confirmed the event is on schedule. In pro boxing is one of the major sports in the country where government can focus through on it. 
we really appeal to the, our government today to build our permanent fighting arena in PNG. We need to market all this product and we can meet all the others overseas country. If they can put their countries up to the world map of pro boxing, why not PNG? The highlight of the event, however, will see Elias Bassa and Nelson Sampson going head to head in the main bout. Bassa has now secured a timely sponsorship package from New Guinea Island's insurance brokers and risk consultants. As a PNG, uh, you know, basically in terms of uh, sports, we like to help young people. Uh, basically, they, they can do uh, this sports in, instead of involving uh, you know, so many uh, things that we don't want uh, young people to do. And so we are happy to come and do this sponsorship. Bus's manager Clara Bassa Corner at the presentation ceremony thanked New Guinea Island's insurance brokers and risk consultants for making it possible for her fighter to take the stage in September. Professional boxing and as the manager, I am sure that he, he will continue on with, with his uh, uh, boxing career. The tournament has drawn fighters from other parts of PNG to compete, such as Solomon Tiamani, who flew in from Millen Bay to train in Port Moresby ahead of the event. Meanwhile, tournament long-time sponsors such as Trophy House has pledged their support again this year, along with sports in providing the venue. We are proud to, to promote also the, the sports of boxing, and it's part of our main goal for the company. So I would like to say thank you again and good luck for, for the September bout. The event will be held on September 10, with the tickets already out on sale at any Trophy House outlets in Port Moresby for just Dan Kina. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. Meanwhile, Nelson Sampson, who will be facing opponent Elias Bassa in the main event on September 10th, is currently seeking sponsorship. Sampson, a professional kickboxer, is determined to change the tide when he faces a professional boxer in the ring. I apply long, I appeal long, I member of local member of Lumilong, Southern Islands. Anga province long, you said you want individual, even individual too, you kindly need loss. You like sponsor me, please, we seek him support for you. Look, come forward and help me long. I uh, want them to like slam money where I can, we can put the bet on the MLS, look, fight for this like main event bout long, September 10th. Please, uh, me kindly seek him assistant long old, or business houses, uh, mainly long. Company where Mr. Work on Time SLR Security Service and a training solution. We believe by you still assist me and I go past long. This is um, sponsor blow me. And to football, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi and Jean-Luigi Buffon have been nominated for the UEFA's Player of the Year Award. Ronaldo helped Real Madrid to a second consecutive Champions League title. Goalkeeper Buffon led Juventus to a sixth successive Serie A title and a runner-up finish in the Champions League. Messi claimed the Spanish Kings Cup with Barcelona and finished as La Liga's top scorer with 37 goals last season. The awards will be presented at this season's Champions League group stage draw in Monaco on August 24th. And that ends True Guys Sports. The weather details when we come back. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Looking at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow, fine and sunny in Port Moresby and fine although cloudy in Daru, Kerama, Alutau and Popandita. In the Momasi region, rain drizzle clearing then fine in Leh. Mostly fine, partly cloudy with some showers later in Medeng. Mostly fine although sunny with light showers later in Wiwek and a few showers then fine in Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, mostly fine although sunny in Lorengau, mostly fine although partly cloudy in Kaviang, thundery showers clearing then fine although partly cloudy in Kokopo and Rabao, and thundery rain showers occurring then cloudy in Kimbe and Buka. And in the Highlands region, morning fog clearing into rain showers then cloudy in Mount Hagen, Mendy and Wabeg, and morning fog clearing into rain drizzle, then partly cloudy in Goroka and Kundiawa.
The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. And that's the way it is this Thursday, 17th of August, 2017. From the entire news team, pleasant viewing. Good night.